All right, hey, how you doing? My my camera is kind of funny. Okay, that's fine. But um, my name is Heather Javon Rose, and I am with Diamond. What's your last name? Oh, Walker. Walker. I didn't want to mess it up. Yes, with Diamond Walker, and this is like her fourth, fifth. She famous. It don't matter, but she famous around town. Uh, she is a beautiful and lovely young lady. Um, she has a beautiful mother and I know they had a wonderful time yesterday, but, um, we're just going to talk and I just want to get her on here just to interview her, just to hear a little bit of her story and shine a light on her. And you know how I am. I'm always looking for more people. So, you know, stay tuned and hit me up if you want to be on my podcast. All right. So we're going to get into it. Uh, I just want people to, um, uh, like know who you are, so introduce yourself again. Um, tell us who you are, where you come from, I guess. Um, what you got going on? Do you do like some volunteer work or anything, or whatever you want to say? Okay, my name is Diamond Walker. I'm a graduating junior at Centennial High School. I've received 56 college acceptance letters in. A total of four hundred thousand dollars worth of scholarship money and five full ride scholarships. Wow! And I accepted a full ride to the University of Illinois to double major in political science and public policy and law. Oh wow! I didn't know you were doing that. Goodness gracious! Well, hats off to you on that. I don't want to be. Yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> but that's amazing. Period. That's amazing. Um. I see a lot of that, um, of the stories that people have on YouTube about the full rides and how many scholarships the person actually had, but actually, you know, knowing someone or if, you know, just seeing somebody and they're in your town, it's amazing, mm -hmm. you know, because it's unheard of for, you know, an African American to get those, you know, scholarships. And now it's like, you can actually, you know, go to a school that you really want to be at. You know, why did you choose um, the university? I chose the University of uh, University of Illinois. It was a very hard decision because I always thought I was going to go to HBCU. Mm -hmm. It was my dream to go to HBCU. Yeah. So I would never in life see me going to the University of Illinois, but mm -hmm. I believe as being a young activist, I do multiple work in the community, and I feel like I can't change the world if I can't change my own hometown. Oh, wee! <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing! Yeah, and it's like I can't pick up and start somewhere else if my hometown is so dam damaged and I have, they need me, why? It just, it wouldn't make sense, like, mm -hmm. even though everybody says, why do you a you're from here? Mm -hmm. I think that's that's the point. I'm from here. I actually know what's going on in the community. Yeah. And I can be 100% more effective mm -hmm. than a policymaker. Than, yeah. Than, like, it's these are my peers that I'm working with. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. Y'all should see. Hey, how you doing? Y'all should feel the energy that I just got when she just said that. Like, I can feel that. That is great. That is so amazing. I feel the same way. I won't be majoring in any political science or anything, you know, but I feel the same way. If I can't, you know, help out the people that are in the same area as me, I feel like I failed, you know, or I didn't do what I was supposed to do, you know, and I feel that I need to help more people in my community before I do leave. You know, because that's the best thing that I should be doing is uplifting everybody else. You know, if you're broken, I'm broken. I'm broken, you're broken. I feel that way. Seriously, I do. But it's not about me. I just wanted to say that. But it's not about me. You picked a major that is pretty hard to understand, though. Mm -hmm. You know, because some people think, and have their own, I guess, bias, stereotypes about political policies, lawmaking, all of that stuff. Like, what made you really, really, like, go for that particular, you know, or double major, period? You know, you could have... 
you could have went on biology or something or did some art but you like double majored in something that is like very dear to you why i feel like because as a peer i protested i boycotted i did everything a, um, a citizen could and it's like mm -hmm. why isn't it enough because yeah. the people who are in power aren't doing what they need they need to be doing mm -hmm. so we have to it's a cycle and we have to change it mm -hmm. If we mm -hmm. keep reelecting these racist white men, mm -hmm. we're not gonna get anything done. Mm. So why can't we add some minority into it? Because yes. it's been through what a minority has, mm -hmm. not like leaving the elite theory and just like bringing it back mm -hmm. to home. Yeah, is the biggest thing for me. I don't. I want to actually make an effective change in the community, and I know by policy is the number one way to do it, mm -hmm. especially that we're being systema systematically oppressed. Yes. Myself, I believe we're in a systematic genocide. Mm -hmm. So how do we stop that? We get inside the system. We stop mass yes. incarceration. We stop the school-to-prison pipeline. Mm -hmm. we, we just cut all that out and start at the grassroots level. Yes. But we're not going to be able to do that with who's in like higher power right now so mm -hmm. we just have to switch up the roles oh my gosh i'm i'm smelling so big because it's just like a 17 year old young lady is really like in her purpose and she knows exactly what she's gonna do at age 17. most of the time it's unheard of but it's possible and you're making it possible for more younger people teenagers as like out there like i don't know what i want to be what i want to do like you've done some research i don't even know all that stuff that you just said i'm like uh-huh okay yeah <laughs> i hear it a lot when i deal with some of my friends and they're like 50 mm -hmm. 40 you know but for a 17 year old to like say these words and know i'm blown away I'm thankful to be in your presence because I know where you are about to go and I can already see it. So, Diamond Walker, right now, <laughs> when you get there, I'm going to just be like, hey, remember me? I did that, yo, yo, fourth interview and I'm just saying, hey, wow, I'm, I'm happy and proud of myself. You're not even my child, but <laughs> hey, I might as well claim you now. You are of, you know, Central Illinois, uh, Champaign-Urbana, and yes, beautiful, beautiful. I thank you. I thank you. But let me get back to it. <laughs> let me get back to it. So you're going to do the double major, and you're getting a full scholarship. Yeah. The whole four years. Yeah. Um. Are you taking a break? Like, you, you're you about to graduate. Are you taking a break in between? What are you doing? Are you just going like, ain't no stopping me? Yeah, I'm not taking a break. I'm going mm -hmm. straight head on. Um, I know it's like an essential for people to take breaks for me. Like, it's, I've always loved going to school, mm -hmm. especially now that I'm studying what I love to do. Mm -hmm. I'm really eager to get started to finish mm. and to go into my career like is I feel like I'm feeling the pressure more than ever yeah so yeah. I, I feel like me taking a break is me wasting time oh it's like it's a cycle that it won't stop yeah like, yeah me but taking a break is just not helping mm -hmm. anything so I have to keep going as the cycle does to yes. try to eliminate it yes you hungry girl oh my goodness well I got the same drive right now I'm 35 though don't tell me <laughs> but yes so amazing so i hear you saying basically you're not stopping you're just gonna keep going so that means that in four years you're gonna be done even if you know there's a break whatever it is even if you don't go you know during the summer you know in four years you're gonna be done double major graduating that is amazing that's amazing. Um, what do you want to do after you do this double majoring, though? You know? After I double major, I am. Um, I do plan on going to law school. Okay. Okay. And then after that, um, my ultimate goal is to become a political commentator and, a po um, and an attorney. Okay. What's the political commentator? What, what is it? Um, 
it's like I always just feel it's to people as like a sports commentator. Okay. That's what they're more familiar with. Okay. But okay. it has the same concept. Okay. They just talk about um, politics behind it. Like if you go on CNN, my favorite um, commentator is Angela Ryan. I was just yeah. gonna say her right when you said it. I said, "Oh my goodness!" Yeah, like that's bringing really, bringing the real. Yeah. And letting people know you are not supposed to be saying that. Yes, yes. I really aspire to be her. Like mm-hmm. she's wow. amazing. So wow. Yeah, I hope really hope we get on that track. Yes, I hope you get to meet her too. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like I hope you get to meet her. Like actually meet her, and that'll be great. Yeah, it'll be a true honor. Oh my gosh, I am so happy and fired up for you. You know, I when I get around people, I get hyped mm-hmm. off of their own dreams because I know how it is to pursue something. Just like you are, just so hungry for something that that's all you're thinking about and nothing else. That is great. That's so great. Oh, my gosh. I, I'm losing it. I had some more questions for you. I'm losing it. I'm completely losing it. So, you're going to be a political commentator and an attorney. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Do you have to do some, like, internships and stuff like that yeah. in between time? Okay. And I can't wait to start my internships um, in law firms. So yeah. I've already interned. Uh, a few time with um, campaigns. Okay. Like, I really want to steer towards the law, mm-hmm. actually dealing with law enforcement. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Are you trying to, like, do some, is it, like, <coughs> not changing law, but, like, doing some policy work type of stuff? Is that in there? Is yeah. that in the bracket, too? Yeah. Okay. I really want to work with um, our minority group, um, changing immigration policy, mm-hmm. mass incarceration policy. Yeah. So, like, just stuff that I see in my minority community mm-hmm. that's falling apart and nobody's mm-hmm. doing anything about it and everybody, like, turns the other cheek yeah. about it. I feel like there's real strict policies behind that that we have to change. Yeah. So, I really, that's what the whole law um came from I really mm-hmm. want to get in there and actually help right right okay okay so I hear you say that you didn't did some like um canvassing maybe yeah. or stuff like that have you did anything else like volunteer work yeah I am on the city of Champaign human relations board of commissions okay um that takes place every first Monday mm-hmm. live on the city government channel I really uh, I was appointed by the mayor, so it was a true honor. Um, I also, I do Upper Bound on campus. That gave me a real, um, mm-hmm. like, opening to the college campus yeah. of the U of I. So I'm really familiar familiar with it, so I won't be like a ghost on yeah, the yeah. campus. Um, and then I did some work with Mock Trial. I did okay. some work um, with a mentoring okay. program at my school. Um, I just like to pitch in anywhere Mm -hmm. I'm needed. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yes. 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 (laughs) Um, I had another question. I don't know. I lost it again. But that's great that you volunteer. A lot of people don't volunteer at all. Mm -hmm. You know, do you recommend, like, volunteering? Will it help a, a teenager, you know, find out what they really want to do in life or what do you yeah I definitely believe so especially I feel like it's really essential for our community volunteering with children especially minority children Mm -hmm. um I know I I've been hearing all the time since I um I've been viral and I've been on the news oh my gosh I I just want to be like you I've been Mm -hmm. expiring to be you it really like warms my heart because like you said it's like it never happens and when it does you like it's never close to home Mm -hmm. so like just being that inspiration to a child that doesn't have a hero or doesn't have anybody to look up to or want to be like because they're surrounded by people they don't want to be like mm-hmm. they wanna, but they have no one to look up to yes. just being that person it's an amazing feeling and I feel like getting inside the community with working with our children is an essential for every teenager because a little girl or a little boy just wants to be like somebody yes. so why can't you be that somebody so yes I feel like it's a really essential to your teenage experience to volunteer 
topic that you know we have to talk about um there was a shooting a couple of days ago and he was a young young guy um we are hearing different type of stories whatever it may be but it's a young african-american with a gun you know and most of the time we always get the headlines of you know some type of shooting gang related we get the same stuff over and over again but at the same time, there could be accidents that happen. There could be things that, you know, happen to people when they do, you know, have some gun on there. Um, how do you feel about that? You know, what what what's your opinion about, you know, how the news covers it, how the paper covers it? Um, you know, what do you think we should do as a community to to get this, you know, like underway, I guess, and for more of the younger males to actually respect the gun, you know, because you you have to respect it, you know? I actually love this question because okay. last year I participated, um, I helped organize the school walkout mm -hmm. and the March for Our Lives event. I actually mm -hmm. gave a speech in a blizzard at March for Our Lives and it touched on this exact topic. There the whole thing for that movement was enough was enough yeah and my poem touched on enough was enough when a white man got shot but why wasn't it enough when it's happening every week in your community mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm sitting here i have about 10 people i know dead and now i'm a junior yeah mm -hmm. but it took this horrific accident to happen to a white man mm -hmm. for you to notice for you to go outside and protest but this is happening every day for us yes. and we just normal normalize it yes so which brings me back to the news coverage when um with me i've been hearing um just specific comments of oh they're just showing african-american students da, 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 da. but that's because we're only shown when we're dead or in jail that's the truth so that's the truth um, they display it as okay it was another act of um gang violence mm -hmm. It was, they just try, like, it's, it's just so horrifying. Yeah, they, it is. They criminalize the victim. Mm -hmm. They criminalize mm -hmm. any, the accused, the accuser. Like, yep. nobody really knows the true story. Yep. And, like, it's happening. It's, I feel like we just normalize it too much. We do. So, that's really what I want to touch base on with our like community mm -hmm. that's why i do so much volunteer work because how can we um stop stop it at the grassroots level so these babies are mm -hmm. dying yes like, yes like people these are people's children mm -hmm. like it's, it's just horrifying it's a horrifying thing it's a whole horrifying thing how the media portrays it mm -hmm. especially media that i meet with mm -hmm. like yeah i feel like they have to do better yeah they need to they need to and we must push it. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to push it in order for them to change it. We're we're just okay with it. Yeah, they we're are. just like sad face. Um, why did they say this? No one's yeah. going up there to really like take this down, or you have the wrong information, or you know, we have to get more than one person to say it. And I think people just think a share on Facebook is enough. It's like, it's not, there's, this is in your community. It's up the street. You can go mm -hmm. um, write a report. You can do anything. I know um, you were protesting. I can't remember what um, specific thing it was, mm -hmm. but we blew up the governor's phone. We went to his office. We knocked yes. on his door. We stood in front of his door. Yes. There's ways for effective policy change. Mm -hmm. And Sometimes it, you have to get up out your bed, off your phone, and yes. actually go do hard, true activism and work. And yes. Oh, my goodness. She's 17. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is great. A lot of people don't, you know, even want to volunteer, let alone um, do the work that you've done already. You didn't cross most of this stuff off the, your list. Like, do you want to, um, like make a non-for-profit 
organization in your future or I'm like getting there <laughs> but in 10 years or something do you want to do something like that yes I really want to especially with um, minority children like that's where I really want to focus my basics on mm -hmm. because they have so hope but they're so lost mm -hmm. it's like they need to find their way but how do we get them to find their way because they're living in households where there is um, a single parent household living mm -hmm. in poverty, they're faced with challenges of the streets, and mm -hmm. then they they just continue that cycle. But how do we how do we break it? Mm -hmm. You have to bring in leadership and role model role models into that child's life to fix it. So we, yes, I would love. I was just thinking about this, like actually starting a program for the children oh, to wow. actually make because I I believe starting at the grassroots level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is yes. the best form to go about yes. it. Yes. Because there, it's just, it's babies that don't, like, they just don't know what they're living in or what they're going into. They, mm -hmm. they, they normalize things. Yes. And I just feel like they need somebody, just somebody, anybody, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. just to tell them this is right, this is wrong. Mm -hmm. Like, good leadership. So, yes, I definitely plan in the future. Mm -hmm to bring that to the surface. Great, 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 yes. Um, I agree with you on the normalizing a lot of things. It's normal for us to like come together for a funeral. Mm -hmm. It's normal for us to talk about what someone did, wrong, bad, negative, whatever. It's, it's normal. It's normal for us not to talk after someone has mm -hmm. passed away. You know, it's normal for our community or culture Whatever you want to say, but it's normal for us to do these things. But in actuality, it's not normal. Yeah. It's not normal at all. We must talk. We need to talk. You know, we need to ask each other, well, how are you feeling after this mm -hmm. has happened? You know, and keep asking that person. Don't just stop after six weeks and say, mm -hmm. oh, they should be fine now. Mm -hmm. You know, no, this is really trauma. You know, this is trauma. This is some real life trauma. You know, wow, you are, you are a blessing. You are great at what you are doing right now. Seriously, you. you are. And I know you're going to be great and amazing. Just keep going. Oh my gosh. Um, I wanted to say something else. I don't know. Oh yeah. So what, after your degree, and I understand you're going to be doing the uh, the commentator and the law and stuff like that. Um, do you plan on doing anything, you know, after that? Are you going to take a vacation then or <laughs> something? Or, like, you going to take some time off after that? What do you, um, where do you see yourself in, like, 10 years? You know, what do you, you want to be doing in, like, 10 years? Other than, you know, what you already told me. I think mm, in 10 years, I I hope I'm past, like, I'm the political commentator. Maybe I have my own talk show. Maybe I have my own um, podcast. Just being a voice to somebody. Mm -hmm. Like, I really just want my voice to be heard because it's been silenced for so long. Mm -hmm. And I it needs to be heard. And I feel like so many people want to hear it. Just getting it out there is my main goal. Mm -hmm. And I hope in 10 years I accomplish that. Mm -hmm. And then I also would say um, maybe I moved up uh, from an attorney maybe to a judge. Maybe, like, I just want to keep mm -hmm. moving up the mm -hmm. rank mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. proceeding in my success. Mm -hmm. So I hope that's where I am in um, 10 years. Wow. Oh, my goodness. That's great. That's really great. That's really great. A lot of people can't see past 10 years, let alone five. Some people can't even see past tomorrow, you know? But I am amazed. And I know there's more young ladies and males out there like you. I know they are. You know, some people don't get the, the light that they should, you know? But I'm shining the light on people that are making a difference. And I really appreciate it. I appreciate your time right now, you know, and I wish the best for you. I really do. You got me hyped and pumped up. I'm serious. You got me real hyped. <laughs> you do. Um, anything else you want to say? 
Because you done covered hey. a, enough stuff and it's just like, we got straight to the point. It's just like, boom, boom, bam, and we done. Yeah, I really like having like actual conversations with mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say who focuses on what I, why I do it. Like, I, I say WCIA, um, Fox, they focused on like just the, comp- the accomplishments, but it was like, there's a point behind it. And I yes. feel like, they they'll cut that snippet out. Mm-hmm. They'll like, oh yeah yeah because I um a lot of my segment I just reference like my Af- my African Americans is the ones who I do it for mm-hmm. and I feel like some of that segment was cut out. Oh yeah. I feel like um my I talked about how I really wanted to get an education. I feel like I deserve the um, all the free ride scholarships. Yeah. And all the scholarship money I got because of the ancestors. Mm-hmm. That their education was deprived. Mm-hmm. I feel like, yeah, all that stuff was cut out. But <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, yes, you can say it now. Yeah, yes, it's like um, yes. open conversation. That like they, they just want they want to hear what they want to hear, and yep. if you don't say it, cut. Yep, cut it. Yeah, yep. like, and they're gonna have like one. <coughs> It's only going to be one minute. Yeah. So you done been there and said all you need to say for 15, 20 minutes. But then they're going to cut it down to yeah. one minute. You're like, dang, what happened to that? I you didn't even put the good parts in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, yes. it's, it's kind of devastating looking at it just to see how mm-hmm. they whitewash it. Mm-hmm. How they gentrify mm-hmm. it. How, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm, but it's like, okay, I did all this. I did it for my black community and I yes. want that to be known. Yes. And I want like it to be known that I'm... I'm gonna bring us up as I come up. Yeah, it, it's that's what they cut out. Yeah, <laughs> yes. It's like I feel like they don't try to unify us. They try to break us together and like yeah. turn heads on each other. Mm-hmm. And yeah, no, <laughs> no. Nope, so, I'm here to say I ain't going nowhere, and I'm gonna keep coverage going left and right, so up and yeah. down. <laughs> yes. Oh, diamond, diamond, diamond. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You are great. You are great at what you're doing. And you know your purpose already. It's just amazing. It's amazing. You know? And I want more teenagers to actually, you know, follow in your footsteps. Or if not, they can have their own footsteps. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, it's just the fact that we need more teenagers to know exactly where they're going and what they're doing in order to like empower us Mm -hmm. you know and help us you know because some people say that the teenagers like y'all ain't nothing these teenagers they they don't have no hope they don't have no hope whatsoever in the teenagers now i ain't doing nothing they all bad they ain't doing nothing you know it could be my generation that's saying that, but I ain't saying it, okay? <laughs> I'm not saying that. I still got some hope. I do. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, I really feel like that is the case. Mm-hmm. They um, they try to point the finger and point out all the negatives that yep. they do. And I, yeah, we do do some negatives. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's like that's a part of growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, and I strongly believe that maybe um, going, going into the high school, because the high school, it's not the perfect thing for a minority student Mm -hmm. um especially um if they want to take the footsteps after me it's like I felt like even now I feel like trying to walk the stage I'm being faced with obstacle after obstacle looking the devil in his eye trying to trying to graduate just because I'm the only black student in the class just because I'm working um 30 hours a week and still trying to maintain my schoolwork with four or five AP classes it's just Mm -hmm. it's really hard and I feel like most of our teenagers they just give up they just stop because um I can tell you my calculus class was that was looking Mm -hmm. pretty rough but it was like okay the only way out is through so you like you gotta it's just having the persistence that most like mm-hmm. most of them give up on just because of the circumstances that they've been faced with their whole life. Mm-hmm. They've been trained to give up, let it go. Mm-hmm. But like just yes. having, yeah, just having that uh, firm mindset of, okay, I'm going to get through this. Mm-hmm. It's what most of them lack, is, which which is why they don't succeed yep. the way that they probably could. And yes. it's also comes because they don't have the support 
that they need to mm-hmm. persevere through the classes, persevere through the long nights. Right. You never, you may not even sleep at night. Still no. gotta get up and go to school. But yeah. it's like that's what you gotta do. I just yes. think some people don't have the perseverance to get there, and that's mm-hmm. where we need to start with, especially in high, the high school. Yes. So yes. yeah, I definitely yes. agree with that. Yes. Oh my goodness. I'm. I'm still amazed. <laughs> And I'm on, I'm on, you know, keep watching you. I'm going to keep watching you. But I am, I'm happy and I'm proud, you know, and I'm happy and proud that I know your mother, you know, you look just like her. <laughs> but yes, I, I am, I'm happy. I'm happy for, um, you know, the future and your future and the future for Champaign-Urbana. You know, we need more um, people like me and you. You know, because I see a lot of me inside of you, and that's that's great, so great. Keep going, keep going. You want to do the podcast? Do it, please, do it, and I will listen to it, tune it in, and I will share it. Seriously, just do it. Nope. Anything else you want to say? <laughs> no, I no. Think that covers it. Okay, all right. Well, thank you so much. This whole time. I've been looking at this lady for like 30 minutes and she has me just like in a trance because it is, the energy is amazing. It's very um, soothing, but at the same time, she's going to have me work extra hard at what I'm doing in order to make sure I keep going and pushing towards my dream. So thank you guys for tuning in and make sure you uh, like this particular video, but it is going to be on Facebook. It is going to be on different platforms. All right. Bye.